a year ago, I made a video about a revolutionary approach called Instant Nerf. Instant Nerf is a fantastic model by Nvidia, able to take pictures and turn them into amazing 3D scenes in very little time. Think of it as an app you could use for easily creating super realistic 3D models of any room or object for video games and other applications. It's just awesome. Instant Nerf was quite a game changer and had a lot of potential. But the results were not perfect. The generated 3D models aren't as crisp as reality is, and we often lack detailed structures of real-world scenes. They definitely look like AI-generated objects that are a bit cartoonish. A year later, Nvidia now releases a new approach based on Instant Nerf with much better fidelity for surface structures beautifully called Neural Angelo. Nerf is an approach to reconstructing a real object in a virtual environment from a series of images or a video. Instant Nerf brings this typical approach to work from hours to just a few seconds while also improving the result's quality. Neural Angelo tackled the fine-grained quality weakness by aiming to improve AI-generated 3D objects' surface quality not only at a high level when we see the whole object and want it to look realistic, but also when we look more closely and find that it's actually not that realistic. By the way, this great paper was published at CVPR, which I will be at in person this year. So if you are also going, please do reach out to meet or take a coffee. I'd love to chat. I'll also record some podcast episodes there, which you will be able to find on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. If you enjoy long-form content around AI, go give it a look, or rather, a listen. It's also called What's AI by Louis Bouchard. Let's get back to Neural Angelo. What did they do to improve the Instant Nerf approach exactly? If you are not familiar with Instant Nerf or Instant NGP, the previous NVIDIA paper I just talked about, I strongly invite you to check out my video about it and come back right here. Just hit pause and I'll wait for you before continuing the video, I promise. Quickly, I mainly want to remind you that Instant NGP works with hash grids encodings, which is basically a way to prepare the data from our images and camera viewpoint to feed it to our neural network for the reconstruction of the 3D model. Great, now that you know about Instant NGP, let's look at the two key differences in improving the results with Neural Angelo working on this specific hash grid encoding technique. This first improvement is their numerical gradients for computing higher order derivatives as a smoothing operation. Here, they are working with hash grids to represent all 3D locations along the camera view directions. As I mentioned, hash grid encoding is just a way to represent the same data that we have along our camera ray using fewer floating points and memory access operations. So it's just way more efficient. This also has the bonus of allowing the final network to be much smaller since the input we feed it so our improved data from our images and camera viewpoints is much simpler. But we go through all that in my Instant Nerf video. Here, the important difference is that they will optimize this hash grid encoding by training it using numerical gradients instead of analytical gradients. It's more efficient because a numerical calculation is basically just an approximation, whereas the analytical calculation is the exact value following strict rules. But that's very hard to do. So a good enough numerical calculation is often much more interesting. It also means that if we put a large step size for the updates of the parameters during training, so asking the network to greatly change its weights would allow it to search for more information outside of its current grid cell and communicate with the grid cells around it. Something that is not possible with analytical gradients. It allows hash entries of multiple grids and an update of all their parameters simultaneously. It basically takes and blends information from more points in the encoded version of our images and camera viewpoint, which helps it create a smoother input for our upcoming network to generate the 3D model. Here, a smaller step size, smaller than the grid size of our hash grid encoding, will make it so that the analytical gradient and the numerical gradient are the same. So they are not that different. This first step is basically to improve consistency and smoothness of the overall input data we feed to our final network reconstructing the 3D model. The second key difference or improvement is a course to find optimization on the hash grids controlling different levels of details, 
This simply means that they will progressively decrease the step size we just talked about for calculating those numerical gradients, so optimizing this process for visual quality. As we saw, a small step will be just like calculating the analytical gradient, whereas a large step will communicate to more grid cells, so using more information and updating more parameters. So giving a larger step size relates to talking with more information and thus a broader view of the scene. This iterative step size decrease allows the network to first focus on the smoothed version of the scene, producing a rough draft with great overall shapes and progressively refine it through finer and finer updates through smaller step sizes, which we then feed to our network, an MLP, or multilayer perceptron for finally guessing our color and geometry values for the 3D model just like instant nerf as we see here on the bottom right. This is a similar concept as with generative models using either attention blocks or convolutions where we first work on the broad image and iteratively get deeper into the network to work on the fine-grained details. Focusing on the broader view with a large step size produces more consistent and continuous surfaces and switching our focus to the more fine-grained view through a smaller and smaller step size avoids smoothing the fine details we want to keep finding the perfect balance. The quality of the 3D models produced is just extraordinary, even for super large scenes and I'm excited to see it being used for a real world use case or a future version of it. Of course, it's not perfect. The authors mentioned that Neuralangelo struggles compared to previous approaches when the scene is highly reflective, like here where Neuralangelo misses the button structures and eyes. As always, this was just a quick overview highlighting this great paper published at CVPR 2023. I definitely invite you to read it for more details and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it and would like to stay up to date with new AI research like this one. I also invite you to check out my podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts called What's AI by Louis Bouchard for more long form amazing discussions with experts in the field. I have a super cool episode coming up shortly with an impressive deep mind researcher behind the Google Map time and tragic prediction algorithm. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time with another amazing paper.